Hey guys and welcome to Top Channel 101 and today we're going to be looking at one of the most powerful fluid simulation system and that is LiquidGen. This is going to be a walkthrough of LiquidGen and how to use it. Before we jump in, if you like VFX, take a look at my course for doing VFX where we do building destruction, explosions and more. Links are in the description. When you first open LiquidGen, this is what you are greeted with. A number of tutorials to show you how to use LiquidGen. If you click on any of these, they will just take you to the Janga FX YouTube channel where you can watch the tutorial. Now, if you want to create a new project, you just go to the side menu here, click new and we'll open up the default template. LiquidGen, like Embergen, is node based. So you set up everything you want using a bunch of nodes and all the nodes you want are accessible by just right clicking and uh, you will get this menu here. You One thing to note is that if you want to select anything in your 3D view, you have to find the node attached to that object. For example, if I wanted to move this torus, I just have to find the node that is attached to that. So I can see that this is the shape. If you're planning on using multiple nodes for this, you can right click and rename any node so I'll just call this torus so that it's easy to find and then now if I select it I get a move gizmo. The gizmo is going to be dependent on what tool I have selected. In the top menu here you can see I have the move tool but there is also a rotation tool and a scale tool. If I go back to the move tool I can move this to the side and I just play back I can see now I've moved that out of the way. The timeline is a bit different from what, what you might be used to in Blender. When you move the timeline ahead to any frame and hit play, the simulation will start from that frame. But here, moving the timeline ahead will not, will not change the start frame for your playback. If you want to move your cursor, say to frame zero, you need to reset the simulation by using Ctrl R. That will reset everything, including the timeline head to start from frame zero. But again, when you start to play back and say you pause and try to go to start from frame 60, it will just snap back to where you stopped it from and continue on. That is something very important to note. So using Ctrl R, you're doing what they call a hard reset. And you can even see that if you go to the simulation menu, you see that there is a hard reset a reset, a step once or pause. Now if you want to animate the position of this ball, select the emitter, our sphere here. You can see we have the position, rotation and radius settings here. If you click on this icon here, it can toggle on keyframe recording. If you click on it again, it can expose the position parameter so that, so that you use other nodes to change the position. For example, if you right click, there are these modulator nodes that we can use to add some movement to our position. I'll add an oscillator here and uh, plug the signal into the position. And now we can see that we're going back and forth, but uh, this signal has been added into all the parameters of our position. So if you want it to just be in one axis, select the oscillator node. You see we have different parameters that are affecting the different axis. Now I can go into the frequency. I know I want to just move this on the X axis. So if I bring this to zero in the Y, it has zeroed out and I can also zero that out in the Z. So if I use Ctrl R, you can see now it's just going back and forth. So this is just using a node to influence the position, but I can also just use keyframes. So I'll just select the emitter, click this again so that we have keyframes here. So I can use Ctrl R to reset the simulation. And uh, now that we have the position parameters here in, the, in our timeline, I can just move this and you'll see that if I go to the next frame, I can add keyframes as I go. You can see how that looks. One unique thing about LiquidGen is that I can loop my animation, but the simulation can continue running normally without being part of the loop. So if you click on this icon here, you can select the range of your animation. That way this, this part we have animated loops over and over, but the simulation will continue on running. So I'll use Ctrl R to reset the simulation. And uh, now you can see that this time, this plays loops, loops back, but the simulation you see did not loop. It just continues on and on. I think this is a great feature that you might find very, very useful. Now, if we look at our nodes, you can see that they are very easy to read. You have the scene, a simulation, 
uh, render an export image. The export image is just going to carry your export settings like uh, resolution, uh, where to export your render files, camera settings, which camera is active. So I can go into that and take a look at my simulation from there. The render node is going to have the render settings like have shadows on, render passes and things like that. Now if you're stuck in the camera view, you can just go under the top menu here and just go to the default views. The scene node is just a way to put everything together. We are adding a camera to our scene and uh, we have uh, the light. And we also have this ground plane. You have the simulation itself. All the settings are down here if you want to change them and that is all connected into the scene via the liquid particles and liquid mesh. You also have the colliders connected through uh, the collider and uh, you have to pass any meshes that you want into the simulation through a collider object so that it can handle the collisions. This is a quite simple setup to use but it can get complicated. Take a look at other examples by going under home icon presets. You can look at different presets. You have this blood splatter. If you, if you click on that, you can see we have that. Let's set up our own project. Uh, I don't need to start with this emitter. So I'm just going to select this sphere, delete that. If I reset the simulation, we won't have any fluids. Let's start with a primitive shape and connect that into our shapes emitter. Make sure to go to, to the primitive settings, increase the radius and bring this up Control r reset the simulation and you see what we have but i want the shape to be a cube and i'll just reset this for a second and uh, scale this now i don't want this sphere here so i'll just have no colliders for now now if we simulate this is what we get we get we get a lot of water added into a scene, but we are getting an error. Maximum amount of particles have been reached. So if you want to increase that, just go to the simulation. You can see we have the maximum number of particles is set to 5 million. So let me increase that, apply the, the simulation and hit play. But I don't want the liquid to continuously be flowing into the scene. So I'm going to go under our emitter and change that from continuous generation to fill so that it just pause the volume into our simulation. I'll reset using Ctrl R and now you can see we have one volume. Now I also want to bring in my character, the one we got from Mixamo here. So I'm just going to use the import node. So right click and use the import node. This is just going to be a way to import in our geometry into the simulation. So just go under the settings and look for file path. Navigate to your file. It will process for a few seconds. Now I have it in my scene. If I bring this up, you don't see anything. That's because we have nothing connected into the simulation. I'm just going to grab my geometry, connect it into the collider shapes. And now you can see that we have our character. If I play the timeline, you can see that the character itself is too small and, and we are not seeing any animation. That's because uh, if you scroll down, Liquid Gen is able to detect the different actions that you might have for your animation. So for this, we have a T pause and the Mixamo animation are where the character is scrolling. So if we reset, you can see now we can choose that. If you have more animations, you can even switch between them uh, there. Now, like I said, the character is too small. So I'm going to reset the simulation and scroll down to the scale and scale this character up. Now, you can see what we're having. I'm also going to select this, the simulation, go to liquid appearance and turn off refraction so that we can easily see what we're working with. Let me also change this to a more reddish color. Let's also create a container for this. So I'm going to add another shape, primitive shape, connect it to the colliders. Uh, this time let's add our own collider because I want to use different settings. Connect this to the shape and connect this to the colliders. Change the shape from sphere to cube and let's make it bigger. I'll just use the scale gizmo here. Now I don't want the box itself to show, so I'll just come to the colliders and turn off show. Now if I select another node, it won't show. If I reset the simulation, you see that the emitter is not emitting any fluids. So to, we can go back to the collider and invert the shape so that the collisions are happening. Now if we reset, we get the fluids. Uh, one other thing I'm going to do is change the shape of the emitter. 
we can even loop our animation so that this character animation is always looped. Now look at what we have. So you can see one advantage with Liquid Gen is that your characters can be in a loop while the simulation goes on forever until the fluids settle or until something else happens. Now if your fluids disappear after some time, just select the emitter and increase the lifetime range so that the particles stick around for longer. One other thing we could do is add some forces to create waves. Right click here and add force. Let's use a line force. A line force connect this into our forces. We already have gravity. If I turn that off and reset the simulation, you see nothing is happening. There is no gravity in the fluids. So that's what happening. So I can bring that on, bring back that on. And uh, now let's play with the forces. I want this force. Let me rotate it because we want to create waves going in that direction and oscillating back and forth. Let's increase the force strength. Let's say 100, start with 100. Reset the simulation. It's pushing that, that side. Let's try 10. Yeah, it's pushing that. Uh, let's try one, force of one. Yeah, there is that, a bit of momentum going that side. Now we can oscillate the strength to go in negative directions, like what we have here. So I've changed this to negative one. So the force, the force should now be pushing this side like the direction is chasing. And uh, this creates some amazing looking detail. Now I can use an oscillator. So right click modular uh, oscillator. Now plug that into, uh, we need to expose the force push strength. So I'll click on this twice to get this push strength exposed. And now I have this value. Now we can see our oscillation is going from, from negative 10 to 100, which is quite low. So let's shrink this down. Let's use negative one and positive one. That's going to be our force strength. Now, if you select the force, you'll see the direction switching. So now it's switching, but I think it's too fast. Let's first increase the strength. Let's try negative five and positive five. Uh, the frequency is quite high. So let's go back to the modulator and uh, bring the frequency down. Now you can see we're creating some large waves. Like that. Imagine this as a beach wave. We can even try that by changing the liquid appearance here. Turn refraction and look at that. Yes, so that's Liquigen. If you want to take it, check it out, all links are going to be in the description. Thank you for watching.